Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. This is Yalak Munim, the founder of Research Hub and also a professor at the University of Southeastern Norway. Today, I'm in Antwerp in Belgium and I'm here for a PhD defense as an opponent. So I thought I would make this video sharing about what is it that a PhD actually requires, what are the structures of the PhD uh, dissertation, how does the PhD defense look like normally. So my perspective will be mainly from the European perspective, but it relates very much with other perspective in the world. But since I have done my PhD in Norway and I have been opponent in uh, some European countries, but also outside European countries, most of my uh, insights should be applicable, applicable to wherever you are. So first of all, what is a PhD? You know, in a PhD, the main idea is to extend the boundary of knowledge, right? So you'd normally look for some topic, uh, some research gap, and try to fill that. It doesn't have to be like completely new thing. It can be, of course, if you do something groundbreaking, completely new, of course, that's great. But often it would be some, some new knowledge creation uh, in a particular topic or a field. Okay, so this is where PhD differs significantly from master's or bachelor studies. In the master's bachelor studies, you are consuming knowledge, but in the PhD, you are producing knowledge. So that's a big difference here, okay? So you have to have that in mind. And normally, how does the PhD dissertation structure look like? So normally a PhD is from three to five years, something like that. So you'll be working on a particular topic for three to five years, less than three, I don't think you can do it anywhere in the world, but normally it's uh, three to five. Some people even take more, six, seven years, okay? But the most common, I would say, is maybe on average four years or five years. So in a PhD, you would normally, in the first years, you would normally do some coursework, not many, uh, depending on the country and the university, it may be like three, four courses to up to five, six courses, but usually never more than five, six courses. And then you will develop also a research proposal uh, on which you will work on, continue working on in the next uh, three, four years, something like that. So the first year is more focused on the research idea, the proposal development and the coursework. Then in the later years, you dive deep into the research, you try to do uh, some data collection, some uh, uh, empirical research often, and you will try to produce some new knowledge, fill the gaps in the literature which are also relevant for industry that you are looking into. So here normally, there are two types of dissertation that we would normally see, okay? One is monograph and one is paper-based. So in monograph, you would normally work on a long dissertation, like 300 pages or something like that, 300, 400 pages over the three, four years, okay? It's continuation of the same storyline um, and it can be a huge work, okay? In a paper-based PhD, it's actually more or less the same work in my opinion, okay? So you have, normally minimum requirement will be to write three papers, three to four journal articles. Some universities, you might do two journal articles, three conference papers, so it can vary, but normally approximately three to four publishable journal articles. Most of the universities will not have the rule that you have to have them published, but they're publishable quality, okay, in good journals. So that's the main expectation. So in a paper with PhD, you will write these three to four papers, and then in the end, you write a introductory section into the storyline of these three, four papers. In some universities, People actually write these three, four papers, try to publish them in journals, but then just merge them into a monograph structure in the PhD dissertation. Okay, so there can be different ways of doing it. But in Norway, we write three, four papers, and then we write an introductory chapter about those three, four papers. Okay, it's not something new, but it's more about the background, the philosophy, 
okay? Uh, the, the, the details of the methods, the details we could not provide in the paper. So we provide those details, the contribution, highlighting the contribution and so on. We call it Kappa in, in Scandinavia, right? So that's the main difference between a monograph and a paper-based PhD. So in a monograph, it's a long document and in paper-based, it's three, four papers plus a introductory section. So when you are normally done with this work for your PhD, then you will submit it uh, with approval of your supervisor committee and then it will uh, go to external evaluators. It is very common to have minimum two external evaluators for your PhD, more or less everywhere in the world. In Norway, we also have the same, two external PhDs, external uh, professors as an opponent, and you will have one internal chair. Normally, after you submit the PhD dissertation, it takes three to five months or something like that to get a feedback, whether it is approved for defense or whether you will get a revision. It can be minor revision, it can be major revision. Usually, if you get a minor revision, you are given one to three months to improve the work and submit again. If you get a major revision, you would get about six months to revise and submit again. So after the dissertation is approved, you will be then invited for a defense. In many countries, it's a public defense. That means anyone can actually attend the defense. So in the defense, normally, again, you will have this uh, to external who will be asking you questions. Uh, most of the time, they are building on the questions or feedback they have given you as a written feedback earlier on the evaluation process, but it can be also new questions. If you're, if you're doing a paper-based PhD and one or two of the papers are published, normally you will feel more confident on the PhD defense day. And the opponents will also have more confidence in you Okay, because your papers have been published in journals. And at the same time, there will be less questions about, likely, <laughs> most likely there will be less questions about the published papers because they are already published in good journals, it was peer reviewed and so on, right? So it's good to have a couple of papers published uh, before your defense, but it's not a requirement in many universities. So we require in a paper-based thesis a publishable uh, level of articles, not published, okay? So if they are not published, then the opponents will have more work and they will have to go dive into the work to really make sure that these are good quality work and they're publishable in academic journals. Then normally the defense day, it de you will have questions from the first opponent and the second opponent. And the questions vary in, in the way they are done. So normally the first opponents, they are asking questions about your motivation for PhD, your, your future plans, future research directions. So things like that, more general questions. Okay, how did you come up with a research gap? You know, how did you uh, find the methods and why did you choose this method, not that method? So questions like that. Often the second opponent goes more detail into the works and ask more specific and detailed questions. But again, this might vary. Uh, depending on which country you are based in. But normally that's the norm. The first opponent goes on the general overview of the PhD dissertation, and the second opponent goes much more into focused questions and nitty gritty of the dissertation work. So I hope you find this video useful, if you're particularly, if you're an early career PhD, or if you're planning to do a PhD, you, will, you, it sh you should get a good overview from this video. But also one thing I would like to uh, remind you that, you know, if you are aiming for an academic career later, don't just limit yourself with the three, four papers that you have to do in the PhD. Go to conferences, at least one good conference every year, where all the top professors of our field goes. Also, make sure to do some teaching, some supervision in the bachelor or master's level. If you cannot do it officially, do it together with your supervisor. It will be helpful for the supervisor, but you can also write it in your CV. Because when, after the PhD, you will apply for jobs as assistant professor or associate professors, then this will be one of the requirement, whether if you have teaching experience, whether if you have supervision experience. Also, sometimes some calls might ask for grant-related applications, uh, experiences. 
So it's, it's also a good idea to do a little bit writing in the, uh, you know, funding grants uh, together with your supervisor, or maybe, you know, you make a small grants yourself uh, for like some uh, travel fund, conference fund, uh, for events, things like that. So I hope you find it useful. Good luck with your PhD. If you have um, any comments or anything you'd like to share, feel free to write it in the comments. And yeah, have a good day. Cheers.